Uh, good evening, uh, viewers and uh, listeners of Concerned uh, Citizens Media. Thank you uh, for joining me again. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> I will start with uh, uh, the Jenny Gutermas uh, of uh, OMN uh, reports on uh, uh, Oromo Liberation Army uh, uh, military activity in Western Harargay and uh, central uh, uh, Shua area, plus he's reporting on the, the Wallo genocide or war crime, uh, citing a journalist, investigative journalist, uh, plus, uh, you know, the attributes the OMN uh, uh, gave for a uh, uh, <coughs> A uh, journalist uh, Tas Tasfai Gabraab, uh, also Gada Gabraab, uh, is a journalist. He is an author, and uh, also it's a, uh, he was a, a good uh, advocate for Oromo uh, freedom movement. So I will just uh, start with this uh, reporting. Then uh, also I will go to other uh, uh, news. So this week we also lost uh, uh, freedom fighter in South Africa, you know, anti-apartheid and uh, pro-justice, pro, pro, you know, uh, peace, pro-freedom um, and uh, very religious uh, bishop uh, Desmond Tutu also passed away. Uh, the other one is uh, also a senior figure who uh, returned home to help Abiy Ahmed government, Dr. Kas, uh, Kasa Kabede, Ambassador Kasa Kabede also passed away uh, and, uh, last week. So let's listen uh, the reporting on OLA uh, uh, military uh, victory against Prosperity Party security forces, federal police, and uh, uh, OLA activity in a, a central show and his uh, credit for uh, journalists Tasfai Gabrab and also uh, the massacre, the genocide happening in world. So let's listen. <coughs> it's, uh, it's in Amharic. Uh, and Sarawich, Rab Harald Gizon, Pritzigenat or Lago, Sado, Tadrawi, Ermija, Dil Masmas Gabun, the lesser. Ye Oromones and Sarawich, Rab Harald Gizon, me a so, Varada, Ustab Mikin or Kavavich, Pritzigenat or Gar Bakaido, Sost cannot be a joke or a Nathan Tabara, get the Masmas Gabun, Galswal. Jagnau yenas an tagai ba elemo kalto di yeta sa yemo elemo kalto berged ka talatgar ka sos sa atat kapat ba kapat masarya yeta dagdagat or nat matay dong dalswal yeta bilsagan na agdasas yeta hormones an sarawitan mat patlo ba kapato yeta or nat zamacho ka fita niya kasara yeta rasad bat mo nung ka nagral. Rab Harald Gizon, me a sorada, better kaido, or not ye pensigan now at the Rawi as I reach him, Jamro, Hamza, ye mobile to a tatarochina, Bianz, Amnesty Federal Police, Police Avalat, Magadalacho, but cut out the Moma Maracachon, ye hormones and the Sarawit, Amal Catal. Betamsa say Honita, ye hormones and the Sarawit, Bem Rab Harald Gizon. Richana, Gordon de Oradoch, Cat Alat Garba Kaido Tornet, Kafitania del Masmus Gabunum, Gelswal. The Hunetura Dauchus, but a Kaido or Natoch, Barcata, Yabelsagan, our Tadroch, Cat the Kamuchi, Madaracacho, Nam Maracachon, Ye Ormones and the South, Yem Srak, as Gelswal. Or Natochun, Betamaracatan, the Belsagan Gazas, Gishizena, Skatanak, but the Gizetras, if we, Maglechal Satan. 
So this is a military uh, victory on uh, Ole scored in uh, uh, Western Hararge and uh, Eastern Eastern and Western Hararge, uh, killing more than 55 soldiers uh, plus uh, some uh, federal police personnel. So this one is talking about uh, about new recruits uh, finishing uh, their training and graduating uh, in a central shore. So. So is now is a northern shore. The um, prosperity party security forces of burning uh, residents' homes. So as a journalist, uh, Matt William uh, uh, is an investigative journalist describing you know, the continued massacre, genocide in Oromia region, especially in Wollo. Uh, prisoners, political prisoners taken out from uh, cell, prison cells and uh, killed. Also, their body uh, didn't get proper burial, left for wild animals. So this is brutality happening in Oromia. This is Gada Gabraab, just passed at the age of 53 or so.
Okay, so uh, if you want to listen the whole story, you can uh, uh, check out Oromia Media Network. Uh, so, uh, Concerned Citizens Media uh, uh, Express uh, uh, is condolence uh, for the on the passing of this uh, uh, very Oromo friendly uh, journalist. Uh, you know, he is the voice of uh, the Oromo people. Uh, he tried to uh, uh, 
reshape i mean uh, or bring out the hidden history of oromo uh, despite the challenges he's facing from the other groups uh, denouncing him you know as a divider and uh, you know as a fake story uh, teller or writer but that's a reality oromos now uh, they know their story, they know their culture, they know their identity. Uh, they don't hide their identity like before. Uh, they are proud of themselves. So thanks uh, for uh, this great writer plus other uh, uh, Oromos, uh, friends of Oromos who sacrifice for the Oromo movement. So thank you. Uh, Mr. Gada Gabraab uh, or Tasfai Gabraab uh, for contributing uh, for the Oromos movement for, you know, uh, encouraging and uh, informing and teaching and exposing the hidden, the hidden uh, history of uh, Oromos. So uh, rest in peace, uh, Gada Gabrab. Uh, let's 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 go to the other news, and I have one more video about uh, Desmond Tutu, also you know another freedom fighter, anti-apartheid uh, activist. <clears throat> uh, Ethiopia allocates five billion. Uh, bird for rehabilitation. The Ministry of Finance announced that an additional budget of 5 billion Ethiopian bird was allocated for the rehabilitation of war affected communities. During the first meeting of the Rehabilitation Secretariat held on December 24, 2021, in Addis Ababa, Ahmed Shide. The Minister of Finance disclosed that the Ministry submitted the budget proposal to the Council of Ministers. The proposal was approved by the House of People's Representative, Ahmed Said. In addition to the initial budget allocated by the government, significant financial support is expected from development partners especially the World Bank, he said, further explaining that the rehabilitation program is government-led and coordinated. Its implementation will be programmat programmatic on all levels and will be conducted in accountable and a sustainable manner, the minister said. The minister has prepared a preliminary idea for a survey to assess the damage of the war in terms of cash. The idea was presented to the Rehabilitation of Secretariat, where the committee members recommended the inclusion of those displaced by the conflict in other regions of the country, in addition to the northern part of the country. Uh, credit at this standard. So uh, this is the results of a uh, failed uh, policy of Abi Ahmed and the Prosperity Party officials. They are, you know, they exposed Ethiopians uh, to suffer, to suffer because of their fo failed policy, misguided policy for uh, creating this unwanted, unwanted, unwanted uh, civil war. Uh, amongst uh, Ethiopians. So now this is 5 billion. I don't think it's enough, uh, but this 5 billion could, could have been used for uh, other things. But now uh, we are, we are uh, spending very limited resources the country has uh, for this purpose, uh, thanks to Abiy Ahmed policy, failed policy. <clears throat> Egypt closes hospital, uh, trading human organs, and uh, imprisons its owner. 
An Egyptian court has issued a decision to close hospital that trade human organs and imprisoned its owner to sentences of six and ten years. The Cairo Criminal Court sentenced a doctor at Al Granzu at Al Granzori Hospital between six and ten years. The referral order stated that the accused from the third to fifth transported and harbored the victims during 2011 and 2012, taking advantage of their financial needs to sell their kidneys. They obtained the signatures of the victims on the blank trust receipt to, sub to subjugate them forcibly to sell their organs to others with the intent of making financial gains according to investigation. A doctor and three others were sentenced to 10 years in prison and another female accused in the case was sentenced to six years in prison. All defendants were fined, uh, I think it's Egyptian money, 200,000. Investigations by the public prosecutor revealed that the first accused, who is a physician and a professor of uh, nephrology at a university, and four others, including a woman, had established and managed an organized criminal group for the purpose of human trafficking inside Egypt. The transplants were carried out without following the medical rules and the principles licensed to carry out human organs transplants and in violation of the provisions of the law in the regard in this regard. The referral order clarified that all of the defendants agreed with the victims to sell their kidney, taking advantage of their need to many credit Egypt daily news. So it's shame on those who are uh, uh, entered the oath uh, to save life and uh, uh, to treat patients with uh, dignity and uh, confidence and the truth, uh, engaging like a criminal activity, selling organs and uh, uh, you know, uh, joining the criminal organized crime. So this is bad. This is bad. I'm happy the Egyptian government take this measure. So it's shame on you. You are making more than enough money and now you try to get rich by selling innocent people's uh, organ. <clears throat> uh, the bomb blasts in Mogadishu. Senior security official among four killed in Somali capital blast. At least four soldiers, including a district security chief, were killed and three others wounded in a bomb blast in Somalia's capital Mogadishu late on Saturday night. A vehicle carrying security personnel was targeted with a remote control improvised explosive device in Mogadishu's Day Nile district, a police officer told Anadulu agency. The blast took place in front of the district's main police station, and the dead included the dead include Abdi Samad Ugas Farah Farahid, the top security official in Day Nile. The attack was claimed by the Al-Shabaab terrorist group. It was the second bomb blast in the Horn of African country in less than 24 hours. Earlier on Saturday afternoon, Al-Shabaab claimed to have killed a senior security official in a bombing in the port city of Kismayu in Juba land state. 
that came on the heels of an al shabab attack in Juba lands, Taba, Tabo, Tab, Tab, Tabito town, in which three officials, including the town's mayor and the head of its town's taxation department, were gunned down. Credit Middle East Monitor. So, Mogadishu is still, still facing challenges. Another news on Somalia again. Uh, Somalia's Prime Minister uh, suspended. Somalia's president said on Monday he had suspended the Prime Minister for suspected corruption, a move the Prime Minister described as a coup attempt escalating a power struggle between the two leaders. The raging Months long dispute is widely seen as distracting the government of the Horn of Africa country from fighting an Islamic insurgency. It will also raise concerns about the pro prospect of renewed clashes between factions in the security forces allied to each side. President Mohammed Abdullahi Mohammed accused Prime Minister Mohammed Hussein Roble of stealing land owned by the Somali National Army and of interfering with a defense ministry investigation. In response, Roble said the move was unconstitutional and aimed at derailing an ongoing election. He also ordered the security forces to start taking orders from him instead of the president. The steps taken by Muhammad were an open coup attempt against the government and the national constitution, Robles said in a statement posted on the Facebook page of Somalia State News Agency. Sona. The aim of the illegal crooked steps is to drill the election and uh, illegally remain in office. Somalia began holding parliamentary elections on November 1, which were supposed to be completed by December 24, but only a few of the 275 representatives have been elected. In a separate tweet, the United States and the United Kingdom embassies urged both sides to de-escalate and to refrain from violence. Monday's developments were the latest round in a long-running dispute between the two leaders. Muhammad also said he had also removed the commander of Marine Forces, General Abdi Abdil. Abdi Hamid Mohammed Dirir from office while a similar investigation was being carried out. Credit for this one is Reuters. So, uh, former Joe or uh, Mohammed, uh, you know, Somalia president is also playing a game just like Abi Ahmed. He tried to extend the, his power. Uh, by extending the election time, but thanks to the Somalia courageous citizens, you know, he uh, canceled that. Now election is, you know, uh, coming up. He tried to delay it, he tried to stay in power. He's playing, you know, politics. He is also watching uh, the model of Isaiah Safwarki and the model of uh, Abi Ahmed. So, his plane, but uh, I don't think he will get it. Okay, this is from United States State Department uh, press release, uh, one on the days of uh, Archbishop Diamond, uh, Desmond Tutu, the other one is on Somalia election. United States called for credible, rapid conclusion of Somalia, Somali election, press statement. The United States supports the call for an in-person national consult 
consultative council meeting this week focused on improving and expediting Somalia's election process. The United States is deeply concerned by the continued de delays and by the procedural irregularities that have undermined the, cre the credibility of the process. It is imperative that Somalia's national and the federal member states leaders swiftly conclude credible, transparent, and inclusive parliamentary and presidential elections and address concerns in an open and acceptable manner. The United States remain committed to supporting peace and stability in Somalia and will use available tools to meet those goals. So that's a press release on the upcoming election in Somalia. And I hope they will, uh, they will listen to the international community and listen to their own citizens to have a fair and a free election instead of playing around. Okay, this is a statement on the passing of Archbishop Desmond Tutu of South Africa. Uh, Anthony J. Blinken, Secretary of State. I join President Biden and the First Lady in mourning the loss of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, an extraordinary leader who joyously joy, devoted his life to, this, to celebrating and advancing human dignity, justice, and morality. He was unassuming but no less inspiring to the world. Archbishop Tutu's compassion, moral clarity, and uncompromising struggle against injustice and oppression helped guide his country out of the darkness of apartheid and galvanized people around the world to stand up for what is right. His voice will endure through the ages, and his legacy will continue to resonate as a gift to all humanity. We can honor Archbishop Tutu by rededicating ourselves to the richest, richest work that guided his life, advancing respect for human rights and dignity, strengthening equality, protecting fundamental freedoms, and fighting for racial justice. I offer my deepest condolences to Archbishop Tutu's family, to the people of South Africa, and to the untold millions around the world who are joining together today to celebrate the life of a towering uh, figure. So, rest in peace, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and uh, we appreciate his courageous and uh, his uh, uh, actions against apartheid and for uh, uh, human rights. So that's the end of the reading material. I have one more video, then that will be the end. Thank you again. Let's see this video about Desmond Tutu. He was. Okay, here we go. Here we go. A little bit as tribute for Desmond Tutu by BBC. There you go. Come on. What? First and foremost, a priest, not a politician. But for the best part of half a century, he was the face of reconciliation and South Africa's moral compass. The system of this country, apartheid, is immoral. The system of this country is evil. 
Desmond Mudilo Tutu remained outside of party That's politics. Desmond Tutu. But he used the church as a platform for protest against white minority rule. It was under South Africa's oppressive government that he first campaigned against apartheid. When emotions were boiling over, his influence helped prevent bloodshed, and in 1984, he was given the highest recognition for his efforts. When you've been given the Nobel Prize, it doesn't really belong to you, or, or in, in a way you can say it, it makes you uh, answerable to the world. I mean, the world, as it were, has a piece of you. He was a compassionate and sensitive man, one who would cry along with the victims as they gave their harrowing evidence at the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. It was Tutu who coined the phrase Rainbow Nation to describe South Africa's ethnic diversity, preaching unity in the face of adversity. But even after South Africa became a democratic country, Desmond Tutu was not afraid to speak out against injustices, and he was often scathing in his criticism of the governing ANC. I am warning you. I am warning you that we will pray as we pray for the downfall of the apartheid government, we will pray for the downfall of a government that misrepresents us. A spiritual figure with a global influence, there were few issues in the world that Desmond Tutu hasn't spoken out about, from human rights abuses to climate change to poverty. When you want peace, you negotiate not with your friends, that is what we discovered in South Africa. That is what they discovered in Northern Ireland. You talk to the ones that you least like. I will remember his, 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 his moral courage that um, after going on his knees, no situation was insurmountable. And for him, uh, that uh, Roman passage that if God is for us, uh, nothing can be against us. It was not just a cliche. It was something that he lived. It's an enormous loss for South Africa. But Desmond Tutu's irrepressible sense of humor and relentless pursuit of justice will long be remembered by all. Okay, thank you, VBC, for that uh, attribute for Desmond Tutu passing. Is a loss not only for South Africa, but it's a loss of, for all uh, freedom uh, fighters, those who are uh, fighting for justice, equality all over the world. So he is a loss for all humanity. So rest in peace. You know, we can do nothing when the end comes, but we have to learn, uh, take uh, whatever, uh, you know, uh, best examples from there, best model guidance and uh, deal with uh, uh, the issues we are facing uh, at you know at uh, on our country and try to make it better for all of us so uh, you know uh, he said uh, if you want to make a peace you cannot talk to your friend you talk to your enemy to make a peace uh, you can you know it's, it's not good to talk to the uh, enemy uh, uh, don't be afraid. Uh, if you want to make, a, you know, a peace deal like in a Northern Ireland, or now we have uh, the prosperity officials and the TDF and the OLA, you talk to these uh, people, the, the people who are uh, have legitimate concern about Ethiopia. Uh, you don't just continue the bloodshed. So we have to take the best example, best advice for those passing and implement it for a better of the world. So thank you again. That's all I have for today. Uh, you know, I will be back with uh, other news and updates. Please subscribe, share, like my video. Thank you. So long, everyone.